everyone, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming, and some of you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Dawn Chorus Rune's Path. My guess is that we're about to finish his path up uh, real quick. A new update just dropped uh, today, I believe, or yesterday, I believe, that updates Miko's path with day two content. And oh, I'm looking forward to that. I, but I'm gonna be doing I'm gonna be doing uh, day two for Turolf next. Yeah, I'm gonna get some more of that tiger in my life. <laughs> Anyway, guys, please sit back and enjoy, and let me entertain you for the next 20 minutes. All right, Alarm 10, you're up. Alarm 10, you've been engaged. Let's do this. <clears throat> All right. Not really. We're just about to start a game of Spin the Bottle. Where's Bjorn? Oh, Bjorn said he's not coming. He didn't feel like it. Oh, I'm really getting worried about Bjorn. Is everything all right with him? I think so, yeah. Wait, did you say Spin the Bottle? Why do you want to play that? Because it's a lot of fun! And it gets people closer to each other. Well, you could say that. Travis slowly looks around the room, clearly puzzled. I don't think I'm up for it. Sorry. Huh? Why? I mean, do you really want to play a kissing game? Yes! Don't ruin this for me, Travis! Huh? What do you mean? Is this been the bottle of the game where you kiss the person the bottle points at? <laughs> what did Lake expect was gonna happen? What? No! You're supposed to ask a question or give a dare to a person the bottle points at. Oh, so it's just truth or dare. Wow, I was really confused here for a moment. That's fine then. Should be fun. Uh, so, for a start, we need a bottle. Anyone finish their beer yet? Lick looks around the room, but no one replies. Okay, I can fix that. He raises the bottle to his stout and downs the remaining half of his beer in a few big gulps. Wow. Oh, by the way, I almost forgot. I bought a bag of salami salmiaki. Anyone want some? What's that? Finished sweets. Quite peculiar if you never tried. I like sweets. I want to try. Lick opens the packet and passes it around. Everyone apart from Jorgen takes one and pops it into their maw. The salty, fiery taste takes me straight back to my childhood. We used to buy these after school with our pocket money, especially during the winter. Ah, this is nice. What is this? Blake, what the hell is this? What did you give me? <laughs> Travis, are, are you okay? Uh-oh. No, I am not okay! Travis runs to the nearest bin and spits out the Salmiak, then looks at us with pure horror and disgust on his face. You guys enjoy this? Well, not me. I feel like my tongue is on fire. God, I need a beer. Where's my beer? Lake passes Travis a bottle of beer in the opener. Travis pops the cap off and takes a few big gulps. Crisis averted. Can we come back to the table now? Yes, we can. Thank you. Poor Travis. Okay, everyone ready? About the rules, no taking back. No altering the questions or dares after they're asked. And anything goes. Sounds fine? Sounds good. Mm, how are we going to decide who goes first? Hmm, we could use an app or roll a die. Does anyone have a die? <clears throat> I could go first. That would solve the problem. Oh, sure. Go ahead. Do, 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 do. Cute music. Travis makes some space in the middle of the table. He takes the bottle from Lake. Sorry, guys. Let me swing my coffee real quick. Oh, good coffee. Alrighty. Dark roast. My favorite. He spins it enthusiastically, so it almost falls off the table. Oh, Miko. Looks like you're first. Truth or dare? Let's go with truth. What's on your favorite mug? A dolphin. I bought it for myself when I started studying marine biology. Do you remember why I started? And why did you start? Dolphins fascinate me. I'm sure I'm sure meaningful two-way communication with them is possible. That's what I'd like to work on, but with all the material we have to learn, it's easy to forget why I'm here. Ah, I see. You can spin the bottle now, Miko. 
Miko spins the bottle, which stops squarely on Lake. Truth or dare? <laughs> Leave me with your question. What's the stupidest thing you've ever bought? Oh, not an easy one. Hmm. I'd say the fancy coffee machine I got when I moved to the dorm. Oh, right. This has always puzzled me. Lake has a shiny espresso machine with a grinder in his room at the dorm, but I've never seen him use it. I thought a nice quality coffee would help me with studying, but that was just a rationalization. I just always wanted to have one because it looked so cool. Heh! <laughs> and you weren't happy with it? Turned out I don't like espressos and it requires a lot of maintenance, so I just have instant coffee and brew it in, oat and, and brew it in oat milk with sugar. I find it hard to find that anyone can enjoy black coffee other than extreme masochists. Well, I like it. But fair, I get your point. <laughs> This time the lion spins the bottle, and it stops at Torolf. Oh, you know he's gonna do some shit. Come on, guys. Oh, Torolf. Truth or dare? Hmm. Let's start with truth. What was the time you spent the most money on one meal? Hmm, I actually remember that well. It was in Thailand at a hotel restaurant specializing in seafood. I generally don't eat fish, but I had heard raving reviews about the place and had to visit. The hotel was in a skyscraper, and the restaurant itself was on the second highest floor, so the views were stunning. Thailand is ridiculously cheap, but I was there with two friends and paid for everything, and we didn't hold back ordering. Oh, that must have been nice. Just visiting Thailand sounds so cool. It sounds cool enough, but this sounds so good. Isn't that multiple meals, though? I'd say it's one, just for multiple people, especially if they shared the same dishes. Okay. My turn now. Uh -uh. No! Look at that look! Look at that look! He's scheming! He's a schemer! The bottle spins. It stops. Rune! <laughs> Truth or dare? Truth. Ho! Oh! Ho ho ho! What the fuck did I tell you? How often do you masturbate? Uh, whoa, what? Hey, we agree that anything goes, right? We did. So, um, I'd say twice a day, maybe. No, oh, someone's needy. Rune spins the bottle hastily, his face all red. <laughs> the bottle spins a few times before stopping on. Oh, Jorgen. Truth or dare? Let's spice this up a bit. Dare. Oh, -ho, Bat Boy, coming in hot. Hmm, let me think of something then. Oh, hmm, I have a good idea. How about you play us your last played song? Sure, just a moment. Jorgen stuffs his paws into the baggy pockets of his poncho and fishes out his phone. He taps at the screen a few times while we sit in complete silence, apprehensive. Suddenly, cacophonous noise blasts at full volume, and although Jorgen's phone doesn't have the best speakers, it's enough to make us jump in surprise. Whoa, Jorgen! I'm not gonna lie, this is not what I expected. And that's not what I usually listen to, but you wanted to hear my last played song, and this is it. <laughs> the fuck was that? Some ambient music? Oh, oh yawn. I only have one question. W why? Well, I like it. I wouldn't listen to it if I didn't enjoy it. What's there to enjoy in noise? There's a lot to hear. If you, there's a lot to hear in it if you listen closely. I like the intensity of it, and the textures are unlike anything you hear in conventional music. I like how exploratory it is, and that it doesn't require any, ex any expensive in, in equipment. Just good ideas and some DIY knowledge. Anyway, my turn now. It's time for Jorgen to spin the bottle, which stops on. Oh, Lake. Truth or dare? Mm, give me a dare, too. Hmm, what to ask you? Oh, I know. Show us the last picture in your gallery. Uh-oh. Lake, what you been doing, buddy boy? Jorgen! Hmm, can I, can I show it only to you? Hmm. No, that won't do. I already said show us. I can't take it back. Oh my, Jorgen is ruthless. 
I better not get in his, on his bad side, ever. Uh... Like, thinks for a moment before pulling out his phone and unlocking it. With a wide smile, he points the camera at us and takes a photo, then turns the phone... <laughs> Here, the last picture in my gallery. Oh, Lake. Hey, isn't that cheating? Shouldn't he show us the picture that was the last one when you were asking the question? I didn't specify that, so he gets off on a technicality. Too bad, I wanted to see what he was so sheepish about. He's got a penis in his phone! Your turn now. Mike spins the bottle, and once again, it stops at Rune. Truth or dare? Truth. Let's see. Have you masturbated during this camp yet? Oh, what's with these questions? You two, come on. I did. Happy. Yeah, you could say I am. Just wait until I get to ask you a question. I'll know to go with a dare, then. <laughs> oh, even better. Oh, no. Rune. Now it's Rune's turn, and the bottle stops at... Oh, Carbon. Truth or dare? Uh, let's go with the truth. Truth. What's the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to you? Oh, crap. I have a ton of these, but it's hard to think of anything specific now. Uh, maybe when my roommate walked in on me... Re no, 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 no. Definitely not telling that one. <laughs> oh, I know. When I first got my film camera from my grandpa, I was so excited about it I started to take photos exclusively with it. For my mom's 40th birthday, we threw a big party, and I was the only one taking photos. Back then, my family already relied on me as a photographer during events, so no one else thought about bringing a camera or taking photos with their phones. And when I went to develop the film... Let me guess, you didn't put the film in the camera. Worse, that would have been a rookie mistake. Somehow, I messed up the rolls and ended up with one empty roll and one filled with double exposures. Oh, damn. I didn't know it was possible to take a double exposure. It wouldn't even cross my mind to check. You could do a lot with film. It's really cool. But yeah, I ended up with only a paw full of usable photos from the whole event. My parents were rather angry. Okay, actually, let's back it up. I want to see what he what happens if he picks Dare. Dare. Hmm, my, my. We're feeling brave, are we? How about you give us your fiercest tiger roar? Ah, yeah, this is the best one. This is the better one. Give my what? Come on, we all want to hear it. Carvin, you can do it. Oh, this is embarrassing. But I asked for it, right? It's too late to back out now. I... Mm, rawr. That was rather quiet. We barely heard you. I'm sure that's not your fiercest one. Roar! <laughs> Better. Almost there. I stand up and roar, possibly the loudest roar of my life. So loud that the others look at me in terror. I had no idea it could produce this kind of sound. Nice! Wow, that was something. Calling me impressed. I had no idea you had that in you, Carvin. Wow, that felt pretty liberating. My blood is pumping much faster now. I can feel it pulsing in my ears. I sit down, feeling rather weird with everyone staring at me. Neither did I. He's got the beast inside. I grabbed the bottle with my slippery paw and put it in motion, watching it spin before stopping at... <laughs> oh. So it's payback time. Truth or dare? Let's go with a question. Ah, shame. I had some ideas already. What to ask him? Oh! Alright, we're gonna do all these. What's your biggest regret? Not picking up an instrument earlier. If I had started playing guitar when I was still a kid, it'd come much more easily to me. It's harder to get a fluent at, to get fluent at my playing at my age, but not impossible. Better late than never. Interesting. I thought it'd be something related to sport. He doesn't mention it very often now that I think of it. All right, so let's back up and we'll do. What's your favorite food? <laughs> Blueberry pie, definitely. Though apple pie comes in a close second, served with a scoop of vanilla ice cream. Oh, and some fresh mint and a sprinkling of cinnamon and chopped pecans. Ooh, that does sound good. Wow, I haven't even seen a lick this dream on his face before yet. Wow, you must really like pies. <laughs> what can I say? I really do. 
All right, so we're gonna go back and we're gonna do. What's the drunkest you've ever been? When did you get the drunk? When did you get the most drunk? Hmm. It must have been sometime during my first year at the university. I drank much harder back then. Oh, I know. There was this one party in the dorm room, in the dorm during which I wrestled with a bunch of dudes I didn't know, and I still have no idea why. I tried to outdrink a moose guy who was twice my size, and in hindsight, it was a rather poor idea. I had fun, but I remember barely half that evening. Those were some good times. I miss them sometimes. Well, what happened to them? Oh, I joined the team and started to study much harder. I didn't have the time to party like that anymore. And I gave up alcohol for a, little, for a longer while. When it became a habit to me, I noticed, noticed I started to feel somewhat down without it. I knew I had to stop. Thankfully, I have a healthy relationship with alcohol now, so a beer or two every few weeks doesn't hurt. Rune leans in, grabs a bottle, which stops on Jorgen. Okay, so we're going to do the final one. What do you think of me? I hope it doesn't come off as too egocentric, but I'm genuinely curious. What do you think of me? <laughs> Aww. You're a nice friend and an interesting guy. You have your passions and ambitions. You could do with some more confidence and boldness to let what's inside you shine through more clearly. Don't be afraid to talk about yourself more. It's not a bad thing to share more of you. Green leans in, grabs the bottle, which stops on Jorgen. Dare. <laughs> sure, your call. Have a Salmiak. That bat is going to kill you. Rune... I hate you. Jorgen grabs a small bag of the treat from Lake, takes one and pops it into his maw. He shuts his eyes and chews the sweet for a bit. Suddenly he stops and his face starts turning red. For a moment I'm concerned that this might be an allergic reaction, but no, the bat is breathing normally. He just must be very sensitive to them. I just hate them this much. Happy? Yes, I am. Thanks for asking. Jorgen spins the bottle now, and it spins just twice before stopping on Lake. Truth or dare? Truth. What would you do if you had only one day to live? One day? That's not much. I'd like to take a plane to New Zealand, but the flight would take like 16 hours or so. At least I'd die in New Zealand, though. <laughs> but most likely I'd take my friends, get into a car, drive us to some beach and party till the midnight. We'd make a bonfire and dance around it. One of us would play a few songs on a guitar and we'd have a sing-along. Oh, I'm almost tearing up just thinking about it. It would be the best ending I can think of, though. It's a shame it couldn't happen in New Zealand. Okay, who's next? That lake spins the bottle on the table, and it almost flies off the edge before stopping, pointing at Rune. Is he this drunk already, or just clumsy? Oh, not again. Is this for real? Sorry. Rules don't forbid that. Truth or dare? Dare. Oh. What should I give you? Blake looks around the room as if looking for ideas before locking his eyes on me. What are you doing? No! You get that look off your face, mister. No! Oh no, no, I know what that- I know that fucking look. I know that fucking look, you devious little lion. Bad kitty. Bunk, bunk, bunk. Bad kitty. <laughs> Whoa! Rune, you have to kiss Carvin. Rune looks at Lake, horrified, before turning towards me, his eyes pleading for help. I am in no state to protest, though, and this doesn't exactly sound bad. Am I drunk? Honestly, it's hard to tell. I do feel a bit woozy. Rune is sitting just next to me, and I feel his hot breath on my snout. No, no, that's too much. Guys, stop. No kissing. How about we switch to Never Have I Ever? It's a much friendly, it's a much friendlier fun. Hmm. Good idea. Yeah. Let's do that, whatever it is. No, it's a very simple game, even simpler than this one. We sit in a circle and take turns saying a statement about something we've never done. Others drink as a penalty if the statement isn't true for them. The fun is in making as many people as possible drink with one statement. Are we doing shots? Oh, I'd rather not get us all drunk at the second day. Remember that we have lectures tomorrow. And that Jorgen doesn't drink. Ah, buzzkill. How about we take swigs of beer for those who are drinking and raising paws for those who aren't? Fine by me. Sounds good. 
Hmm, fine. Let's go with that. Aw, oh, you're no fun. Hey! Hey, you don't get to say that. You just hijacked a game and spin the bottle. Can't you just pour me a soft drink or something? Sure, works even better. I'm already sitting in a circle. Does everyone have their drink? I need a bottle. I'm done with this one already. Ah, uh, just wait a second. Anyone else need another? Can you fetch me one? Sure thing. I'd be here for a cutie coming right up. Cutie? Here you go. Ah, uh, we're gonna keep going, guys. I think we're nearly at the end now. Thanks! How about we take a small break? This is quite fun, but I'd like to stand up and maybe get some fresh air first before continuing. We could do that. Why not? I gotta take a leak. I'll be right back. <laughs> oh, God, what happened to you there, Lake? I'll go look through my record collection here again. Oh, taking a break was a good idea. It feels good to stand up and stretch. I was more tense than I thought. I'm gonna go out and get some fresh air. Anyone wanna tag along? Oh, I could go. Yeah, shit. Yeah, let's go. Sure, it'd be nice to stretch my legs. Great. Let's go, then. We followed Rune out the room and into the corridor, just enjoying the brief silence. Cold air blows over my face as I step outside, ruffling my fur. It feels nice after sitting for a longer while in my room than in a room full of people. It was already getting quite warm there. I didn't bring my jacket with me, so I'd rather not stay out too long. But it feels good to be outside. I spent way too much time looking at a screen today. I went for a long walk earlier today, but I'm glad gladly go for another. I love it here. It's so picturesque. It's a nice change after a few months of living in the city. When you get a bit higher up these hills to the east, the view from up there is almost like that one famous, that one famous painting. Well, what was it called? Sophia... Oh, I know which one you mean. Soria Moria. Yes, that one. Did you know it's based on an old Norwegian tale? Oh, I didn't. What's it about? In short, it's about the search for perfect happiness. I can tell you the whole thing later. Would be great. I love folk tales. I wish I took my drawing supplies with me. I'd like to draw the view from that point. Oh, Miko, I didn't know you started to draw. I just started to learn. I signed myself up for one class a week in a community center near me. Which one is it? Folkfang. It's really nice. Oh. I'm attending drawing classes there, too. Which day of the week? Thursdays. Ah, I'm going on Fridays. Maybe I could switch to Thursdays if it doesn't collide with our team's practice schedule. Carvin, have you thought about learning to draw? Not really. I'm already doing photography. I know it's not the same, but when it comes to capturing something visual, I already learned to do it with the camera. Hmm, I understand. Well, in any case, I can recommend that place. I'd like to stay a bit longer. I'm afraid I need to head back. I've already gotten pretty cold. They're luckily already waiting for us, yeah. We're back! Good, then we're all ready. Travis, you can start. So the rules are simple, and you already heard them. You don't need to elaborate if you drink, but feel free to do so if you want to. That always makes the game more fun. Who wants to go first? Oh, I do! I didn't get to give a dare, so it's my turn. Hm, <laughs> go ahead. You have to start your sentence with Never Have I Ever, and tell us something you've never done. And you want something innocent, right? <clears throat> Not necessarily, but let's see. Never have I ever had meat. Oh, wow, really? Never? Only Jorgen doesn't drink, although that doesn't surprise me. Bats are known for their affinity for fruits in a meatless diet. Wait. Okay. My family doesn't eat fish, so I never tried it as a kid, and then I never felt like having some. And nowadays, it's not that easy to find it anywhere. Well, fair. Never have I ever gone skinny dipping. Miko, Lake, and I take a swig simultaneously. Of course, every Finn has gone skinny dipping at least once in their life. Your turn, Miko. Never have I ever dyed my hair. I look around the room. It looks like I'm the only one who drinks this time. Damn it! I had no idea Miko would remember that. Well, once I let my friend dye my hair blue for a convention we went to. Let's say my parents were less than happy about it. 
Thankfully, I lasted only a few weeks, but it was awkward. Oh, now it's my turn. Alrighty. Coming up with something I have never done is hard. The reverse would be much easier. What a weird game. Let's see. Oh, I've got choices. Okay. Um. Oh, God. How long? I wonder how long this goes on for. Oh, okay. Let's see. Never have I ever sneaked out, out at night. Never have I ever sneaked out of my house at night. Jorgen and Mika both take a swig of their drinks. Huh, I didn't expect Mika to ever try doing that. Care to elaborate? I'd rather not talk about it, actually. I used to do it all the time, and going out is way more fun than staying in. Fair, I won't argue there. Okay, let's go back. Never have ever snuggled someone naked. I'm gonna save that one later. Never have I ever broken something that belonged to me. Rune, Lake, and Jorgen all drink the same this time. I broke... I broke two of the phones already. That's why I keep my current one in a case. Oh, I broke quite a lot of stuff. The latest was a pair of headphones I had since middle school. But oh boy, they survived a lot. It was a miracle they were working for so long. Okay... Never, I never have ever stayed in a place as fancy as this guest house. Huh. Really? Only he, Travis, and Torolf drink, though. This isn't really fancy. That's rather usual. The facilities are rather nice, but this is still just a guest house, not even a hotel. I didn't travel that much, and my parents always preferred renting flats to staying in hotels. Well, everything ahead of you, then. Alright, so... Never have I ever snuggled someone naked. Ha! Huh! <laughs> three of them are like, eh. The other three are like, hmm. Really? Everyone? So, likely I'm the last person before their sexual debut here. Guys, you're making me feel bad about myself. Oh. <laughs> well, we could always fix that. Hey, it's not a bad thing. Okay, whatever, next one. Ah, so all of them have done things. Interesting, even... Hmm, even Bat Boy and Travis. Never have I ever been on any roof. Jurgen takes a sip of his soda, but the rest of us... But the rest of us don't move. Oh, when was that? Last time... Hmm, earlier this evening. What? How? I can show you later. I'd be thankful. I always wanted to sit on a roof and look around. I'm not sure why, but it was my it was quite my trivial dream since my childhood. Just never got to realizing it. Okay. My turn. Never have I ever had a one night stand. Oh, this'll be an interesting one. Let's see. Jorgen, Lake, Rune, and Torov all take a swig of their drinks. Hmm. Ah, another swig of delicious, delicious coffee. The rest looks at them expectantly. Oh, come on. Like I'm going to talk about it. Hmm, I could talk about mine, but I'm pretty sure you don't want to hear about them. Well, I'd like to. Oh, go ahead if you want. The most memorable one I've had was with a pair I met at a local club. Oh! Oh, let me tell you, they were good with ropes. And I haven't seen a collection of toys this big before or after. <laughs> they even had a sling of... Okay, maybe that's more than I wanted to know. Mm, next one, maybe? Ah, it's my turn now. We're getting into sexual stuff. So... Never have I ever blacked out at a party. Rune and Lake both take a gulp. I already mentioned one party. I'm not going to talk about more of them. I don't need much to get drunk, so it happened to me a few times. But I think I'm just falling asleep. Yeah. Like, go ahead. Oh, right. Never have I ever sent a letter. Mika, Rune, Jorgen, and I all sip our drinks. We used to send letters to our relatives in Helsing every year for winter holidays. That was our little tradition. Same with me, but I was also sending letters to my family in Poland. Jorgen? <clears throat> Jorgen? Never have I ever failed a class. Surprisingly, none of us drink. Or 
maybe unsurprisingly, considering half of us are freshmen and we're all in a science club. My turn now. Never have I ever ate a bug. Charles and Lake both sip a, sip a bit at their beers. I tried them in a and I tried them in Asia in many places. They're neither weird nor disgusting. I'm not a fan though. And it's my turn again. Let's see. Let's see. Never have I ever thought about drinking my own piss. Why did I even think about it now? Well, too late to change my mind. I didn't come up with anything better anyway. Never have I ever thought about drinking my own piss. HA! Lake takes a big gulp of his beer while the rest of us look at him in horror. Lake, explain yourself. Or, nope, better don't. What? You never did? Like, ever? Well, not necessarily my own. Jorgen! Oh my, what have I unleashed? No, why would I? Well, just because you can. Like, when you were under the shower and... No! Okay, okay. We can end this topic now. I've heard, I've heard too much already. But I... Stop! Enough, let's move on. Ah, yes. Huh. Alright, so this is about it. Never have I ever sneaked out of my house at night. I broke anything that something belonged to me. Okay. Never have I ever broken something that belonged to me. Rune Lake and Jorgen all drink this time. I broke two of my phones already. That's why I keep the current one in case. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I already did that one. Never have I, never have I ever stolen anything. The room momentarily falls silent. I didn't expect that reaction, but in the hindsight, stealing isn't a small thing. After a brief moment of anxious stillness, it's so heavy it's almost palpable, Travis takes a small, squeak, sneaky sip. But of course, we all see that. Travis? I can't imagine the small, cheerful guy ever stealing anything. Well, um... <laughs> it was a rather stupid thing. I don't, I don't know if I want to talk about it. Well, we already know you did. You might as well tell us the details. Right, so... I had a friend who wanted to get back with their old, their old friend, and I felt they needed a small nudge. So to help him, I took something from that person for a while, but as soon as I noticed it wasn't working, I returned it. I wanted to do so earlier, but I didn't really have an occasion. In hindsight, it wasn't the best thing to do, but I just wanted to help. Javik is very defensive and clearly uncomfortable. Well, in his position, I likely would be as well. Wait, a friend who wanted to get back with their friend? Travis. Uh-oh. Uh-oh! Suddenly the lights go out. Everyone freezes and falls silent in an instant. What's going on? I think we just lost power. Hmm, I don't like that. The light from the fireplace is enough to light up the room, but the ominous shadows it casts aren't very reassuring. It's likely just a small technical issue. I'm sure we'll get the power back in a moment. Let's hope so. I kind of like it this way. It feels much more atmospheric without power. You can really feel that it is pretty much a big cabin in the woods. You're kind of right, you know. Especially with the fireplace. That Tanuki. The power out has distracted me, but I still have a few things to discuss with him. Oh. Huh. He might be connected to us. As much as pressing him here in front of others would feel satisfying, I won't do that to him. I'll have to catch him in a moment so we can talk. But it's also kind of spooky, in a good way. Oh, I know what we should do. How about we tell some scary stories? How about we check on what's going on first? I'll go to the lobby to ask what's up. Uh, anyone else want to go with me? No way. Don't tell me Rune is afraid of the dark. I'll go with you. No problem. Great, thanks. Jorgen and Rune both turn on, their, turn on their phone torches and walk out into the darkness of the corridor. Seeing this is my chance, I walk up to the Tanuki, standing conspicuously behind Torolf. Travis, can I steal you for a moment? Um, depends on what for. I think you know what for. I want some answers. Travis sighs and follows me to the corner of the room, his steps slow and hesitant. Listen, I know I fucked up big time. I owe you an apology, Carvin. 
Yeah, he's the one who took the key. Just, it's embarrassing. In the hindsight, it's obvious that I shouldn't have done it, but it seemed like a harmless idea. At least he understands this much. I was preparing for a longer confrontation, but maybe it won't be needed after all. There's one thing I don't forget, though. But why? I don't understand why you didn't want me to stay in my room. You see, just please, please don't tell him I said that. I talked with Miko after he got the key to his room. He told me he wanted to take a room with you, but you wanted to have a single one. It seemed like it was really important to him for some reason, and you two seemed close. So I was sure if you couldn't access your room, you would stay with Miko. I didn't know you, I didn't know you, and I was, sh but I was sure that the small nudge would be enough to get you to do that. I wanted to return the key as soon as that happened, but it didn't. I started, to I started to feel remorse, but it all wasn't going as I thought, and you seemed to be really stressed out about the key. I put it back in your camera bag when we were standing in the line for the supper. I was sure you'd notice it soon after when you'd want to take any pictures. Carvin, I'm sorry. Miko didn't ask me to do it. I just wanted to help him somehow. I know this looks bad, but can you forgive me? Yes, I'll forgive you, ma'am. You sound sincere. If you really don't understand why if you really understand why it was a bad thing to do and you won't repeat that, I can forgive you. But I'll still be wary of you. You have some amends to make. I know. For now, I'll try to help others a bit less often. Ha! Huh. I don't know if it's the right lesson, but in this case maybe it's a good idea. I gesture the Tanuki to follow me, and we go back to the common room together. Oh, this is exciting. What if the power won't come back? Like, at all? Until the end of the day, at least. If we have enough hot water, it shouldn't be too inconvenient. I doubt our supper is ready yet, but the guest house should be should be, have a backup generator ready for situations like this. Oh, this is cooler than supper. I can even go to bed hungry if it means we get to spend the evening without power. You know you can just not use power even if it's working. <laughs> You're right. But this is like a, com a communal experience, something exciting. Even if we wanted to use power now, we can't. That's what makes it spooky and exciting. Ooh, maybe there's something supernatural at play here. You know, power doesn't just go out without a reason. Uh, how would that work? Well, I don't know. That's what supernatural means. It's inexplicable. Ooh, maybe there's a killer on the loose and he cut at the power so it would be easier to murder us. And we'll let Jorgen and Rune separate from us already. That's like the first rule in horrors. Don't separate! I doubt, this is a, I doubt this is a horror story, Lake. But if so, maybe you should go check if they're alright. No way, I'm not going anywhere! In the same moment, a bright light flashes at our faces from the corridor. It's Rune and Jorgen coming back already. Jorgen! Rune! I'm happy you're back. Did you find out what's going on? There was no one at the reception, so they're probably working on it already. No one at the reception? Huh. What's wrong with him? He spooked himself too hard. Relax, Lake. It's just a power outage. I know, but isn't it fun to be spooked? Not often we get thrills like that. It would be a waste to just let it slip. Wow, what's with this mood whiplash? I, sh I swear he was being serious. So, what now? Hmm, I say we just wait until the power comes back. In the meantime, we could go back to playing Never Have I Ever. Yeah, I feel like I used up all the cool ideas I had already. How about the spooky stories, though? That would fill the mood nicely. Oh, I don't know. Never have ever didn't sound bad. Do any of you know a good sp Do any of you know a good spooky story? Oh, I know one. It's from this area too. So what do you say? I'm up for it. Yeah, I'm curious about the story. Spooky stories time. Ah. Lake straightens himself on the chair and looks at us expectantly. We all sit down on the chairs and couch facing him, some excitedly, some hesitantly. The light of the fireplace illuminates him from the side, giving his features a sharper look. So this is a story I've heard from a guy at uni. He's friends with a group that often goes for fjord trips, and this happened to them three years ago. When looking online for places to stay around these parts for an early winter trip, they found a neat-looking cabin that was dirt cheap. They booked it right away, happy that they found a deal like that. You know, students are always broke, and prices around here are even more ridiculous than in the South. So they booked the cabin for the four of them, chatted a bit over email with the owner, who seemed pretty nice and got ready for the trip. They arrived at the town by car in the afternoon and met with the owner of the cabin, an older Bernese mountain dog gentleman. 
He gave them the, di the he gave them the directions and the key to the cabin and wished them a thrilling stay. After that, they drove straight to the cabin. It was further from the town that they it was further from the town than they thought, and they drove through frozen plains and forests for almost half an hour. But when they arrived and saw a picturesque meadow where the cabin was, they thought that it was worth coming. The cabin itself looked nice too. It was a simple wooden structure, but it had a certain charm to it. It was only October, but the weather was really cold that year, and everything was covered with a thick layer of snow, just like now. They entered the cabin and found it neat and cozy, perfect for a short stay. It was equipped with a kitchenette, three beds, a couch, a table, and a few chairs. So, pretty much everything they needed. There was also a stack of plain wax candles and matches on the table, and a few old paintings were hanging on the walls. One of them, showing a forest in the winter, unsettled them for some reason. The more they looked at it, the more they felt that something in the woods stared back at them. They ended up taking the painting down and hiding it behind the couch for the time being, and unpacked. Afterwards, they put on their winter attire and went for a walk around the area, just to see if there's anything interesting there. But as they walked through the woods, they felt the same unsettling presence that stared at them from the painting. Scared, they retreated, to the cab they retreated back to the cabin. As soon as they were back in, though, the door locked securely behind them, they started to laugh hard. From all the tension in that themselves, too. How silly was that, to spook themselves over some old painting. It was already getting late and dark, so they decided to stay in for the day. They wouldn't be bored, for sure. They were, a rowdy, they were a rowdy partying bunch, and they brought speakers and a lot of booze with them. So they spent the whole rest of the day and a half of the night partying, drinking, singing, and having some great time. When they woke up the next day, it was already noon. The day was cloudy, and it must have been snowing all night. As they looked outside, they saw that everything, including their car, was covered in pillowy white mounds. As the others were busy preparing food, one of them got dressed in winter clothes and went out to clear the snow from the car. But as she opened the door, she saw a terrifying sight. The whole front door of the car, the whole front door and frame had deep, regular scratches, as if made with blades or monstrous claws. As she looked down, she saw that the paw prints were already covered by fresh snow, but they seemed huge. She walked around the cabin and saw similar markings on one window frame, and more paw steps leading into the woods. Terrified, she hurried back inside and closed the door behind her, thanking the skies above, thanking the skies above that they all they locked all the windows and pre they, they locked all the windows the previous night. The rest got pretty spooked seeing her all shaking and breathless. They led her to the couch and let her rest for a short while before she recount before she recounted what she had seen outside. The others thought she was trying to trick them, but when they opened the door, they weren't laughing anymore. Terrified, they gathered around the table and tried to make sense of it. Was it a burglar trying to break in and steal their stuff, or some psycho wanting to murder them? And why did they leave so many marks? They all agreed that the best course of action was to call the owner of the cabin. They pulled straws. The same girl that went outside in the morning was tasked with calling. She did, but, of course, there was no reception. Spooked, they agreed to grab the more valuable of their belongings and ride back to town. Packing only took them a short while. They left, they left all the mess behind and got into the car. Riding back the road they came, they were sure they're safe, until they got stuck in the snow just after five minutes of riding from the cabin. One of them wanted to continue forward on pause, but finally they all agreed it's too late and cold for that, and the town was too far away. If they were driving, if they were driving there for half an hour, walking would take much, much longer. Instead, they decided to go back to the cabin and try calling the police, or at least that, at least the cabin owner would pay them a visit. They walked back in silence, too terrified to try any small talk. Along the way, they regularly checked the reception but still there was none. By the time they got back, it was already dark, and only the full moon illuminated the snow-covered meadow. The cabin was just as they left it. The cuts were still there on the door and the frames, and it looked like no one or nothing tried to get inside while they were out. They entered the cabin and once again locked the door securely and checked all the windows. They didn't have any weapons, but they thought that as, they thought that as long as they were awake, no one would try to break in again. There was still no reception, so they decided to stay until the morning, once it got back, once it got brighter and a bit warmer outside, and then try to walk back to the cabin. In the meantime, to stay awake and alert, they decided to play party games. They started to spin the bottle and played it for a while, but once the questions got a bit too personal, they switched to Never Have I Ever. Late at night, after a few hours of playing, the last candle burnt out and darkness flooded the room. They all fell silent, and that's when they heard heavy steps outside. Like takes a dramatic pause, and I'm so engrossed in the story, I swear I can hear paw steps myself. I glance at the corridor and see nothing but oppressive darkness. I press myself closer to the rune, who's sitting next to me. He's all shivering. Like takes a photo, take like takes a phone out of his pocket and turns on the torch. Their only source of light left was their phones, but they were too terrified to move. 
Finally, one of them grabbed his phone and pointed it at the window. Vic lifts his phone dramatically and shines the light around the room. What the fuck? Behind the window, they saw... Behind the window where Lake is looking, there's a towering figure standing and looking inside. I heard a loud thud in the room. Glancing to the right, I see that Lake fell back from the chair he was in. Before I can react, Rune grabs my arm and pulls me towards the corridor. I'm too bewildered to even register what's going on and start running with him. As we step into the darkness, Rune stops and clings to me. The hell just happened? Garvin, I can't see anything. Can you lead us to my room? Rune's voice is shaking and panicked. I decide not to argue and to take him there first. It's just two doors away. I hope Rune didn't lock the room. I hope Rune didn't lock the room. <laughs> I hope Rune didn't lock the room. I press the handle and the door opens. The inside is illuminated only by the moonlight, but it's much better than the complete oppressive darkness of the corridor. As we enter the room together, something rams straight into us, almost knocking us over. Guys? Yeah, that's us! Lake closes the door behind him and sits down on the floor, leaning on it. Oh, Lita Vieta. I think my life just shortened by a few years. Rune, you can stop clinging to me. Or not, I don't really mind. Ah, uh, right. Sorry. I just don't like darkness. Like, really, really don't like darkness. I thought that deer see well in the dark. Well, not me. So, did you see what I saw? I'm not mad, right? No, there was definitely someone peeking inside. It doesn't... It doesn't have to mean anything bad, though. I think we just got into the story a bit too much and got ourselves spooked over nothing. Like springs to his paws, looking at us with horror. What if they cut the power to murder us? Lake, don't be silly. Things like that don't happen. Hey, I think I hear steps outside. Hey, I think I hear steps outside. Rune whispers with a panicked voice and we fall silent in an instant, a creeping dread paralyzing us. I hear them too, just outside the door. They're heavy, deliberate, and slow. Suddenly they stop, just to pick up again after a few seconds. Only well, now I notice Rune has been holding on to me the whole time, his paw clutching at my shirt front. He releases the grip slowly and takes a step back, embarrassed. Guys, I think I owe you an apology. For what? For how I acted during Spin the Bottle. I think I drank too much. I, th I, I had no idea I'd get drunk that quickly. It was only two beers. Lake? What the hell are you on about, now of all times? Just, if we died today, I'd feel very stupid about it. Lake, no one is dying today. There was only a guy outside looking at us, even though there's literally nothing for miles around, and just when the power went out, there's probably someone from staff fixing it. And that's why they were staring at us through the window? Lake, for fuck's sake, stop panicking! The worst is that he's making Rune and me panic, too. Let's just stand still and take a few deep breaths, okay? Rune nods, silent. Lake, Lake lets out a sound between confirmation and a groan, resting his head on my shoulder. The stag is still shaking a bit, so I put my arm on his shoulder and pull him closer, letting him lean on me. Slowly his shivering subsides and he puts an arm around me too. Rune, are you feeling better? Yeah, better. I'm starting to wonder why we didn't use our phones to light the way. Me and Lake see well enough with this much light. Right. My night vision isn't that bad either, but I don't feel well in the dark. Sorry, I panicked too. His voice sounds more confident and collected now. It's reassuring to see him back to his usual self. We all got carried away a bit, didn't we? By the way, what happened to the rest? I didn't hear anything happening outside. Should we go check on them? No! Oh, this is taking longer than I thought it would, actually. Um... Uh, oh, oh. Man, this is actually legit intense and pretty freaky, actually. That dude did not look, that dude looked like he was up to no good. Let's go out. I think it's a good idea. I mean, what else are we supposed to do? Stay here and wait for the power to come back? Sounds perfect to me. Oh, come on. We should at least look for the rest. Send a message to Jorgen, would send a message to Jorgen, would you? And I'll message Miko. I doubt Miko is looking at his phone now, but hopefully Lake will have some luck with Jorgen at least. We should go regardless. Just keep the torches on there, on the on for Rune. Lake groans again, but doesn't argue further. We wait a few minutes, looking at our screens, to no avail. 
You didn't get a reply, did you? No. Nothing. Same here. So, are we going? There's no one here. Just the empty bottles and a lingering smell of alcohol. No one peeking through the windows anymore, thankfully. Blake, that tickle. Stop breathing down my neck. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to. Blake moves a bit further from me, but only for, but only a bit. Can you hear them somewhere? Give me a second. I think I hear something. Maybe in the lobby. We can check that. Maybe someone from the staff will be there now. With some luck, they'll even be alive. Lake, are... Lake, are you actually spooked or just making fun of us? Both. I peek into the lobby. It's lit up only by the moonlight. Not lit up enough for room, so he's standing between me and Lake with his eyes closed, holding my tail. In the end, Lake forced us to go quietly without and without the torches to remain unseen. I didn't have the willpower to argue, and in the end, it makes it a bit more fun and scary. There's nothing here. Are you sure you heard something, Rune? I'm not sure of anything now. Maybe the noise came from the locker room. Wait a second. Suddenly, something moved inside the lobby. I tense up and take a step back to, into the corridor, and almost falling backwards on Rune. Whoa, what's up? Shh, there's someone here! Not to mention the wolf-like figure was huge. And you think they didn't see us? Hello? Is anyone there? The stranger's voice is raspy, but friendly. If they wanted to hurt us, they wouldn't call out to us, right? They likely aren't from the staff, though. Maybe it's some kind of a technician? Yes, who are you? I live in a cabin nearby. I lost power and came to see if, they, if you lost it, too. I think it might have blown some fuses by accident. The lamps light all. The lamps all light up suddenly, illuminating the room and the stranger. <laughs> he looks so threatening outside. That just looks like some normal dude. It's a large wolf, towering and imposing. His eyes are gentle, though. He looks like he's in his late thirties, and I think he's the one we saw behind the window. Oh, and the power is back. That should mean it's back in my home too. But where are my manners? I didn't introduce myself yet. I'm Dan. It's a pleasure to meet you. Hope it didn't cause you too much trouble. Oh, if only he knew. Also, that's not really a Norwegian name, is it? I'm Carvin. Nice to meet you. I pull Rune and Lake from behind the corner and let them introduce themselves, too. I'm Rune, and this is Lake. Pleasure is ours. I see the light is already back already. That's good. Did they find out what happened already? Hey guys, sorry about that. Uh, we're back. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I'm gonna wrap this up. <clears throat> okay. I believe I can answer that, sir. The fuses in the cabin where I live didn't work, and I must have accidentally melted the ones in a switchboard somewhere. Ah, I understand. We reported the power cut. Someone must have dealt with that already, though. Do you live nearby? I thought the whole area was empty. I do. I moved into a cabin that was left empty for a good few years. I'm Dan. Are you from the staff? No, I'm keeping an eye on the students here. We're on a science camp from a university in Anzalo. Ah, pardon me then. I've heard of the camp. I talked with one of your students, Klaus. If everything is resolved, then I'll head back home. I'm terribly sorry for the situation. I hope it didn't cause you much distress. That <laughs> lake, just staring, just slack, just wide-eyed and slack-jawed at him. Hmm, that was interesting. Certainly. Where did this guy come from, and what did he do to blow out the power in the whole area? And how does he know Klaus? I'll talk with him once I find him. Is everything fine? You three look a bit shaken up. I'll tell you later. It's a funny story. By the way, where is everyone? We went through the guest house and asked them to either remain in the rooms until the power was back or come with us to the cafeteria. More than half the students are there at the moment. Ah, we missed it completely somehow. We stayed in my room and went out only a few moments ago. I'll be going now. I have to go check and make sure nobody left the guest house. Have a nice evening. So, what are we doing now? I think I've had enough of doing anything today. I'd like to wind down and relax a bit. Ah, I thought of finding Jorgen and Torolf and finishing the story. I'll go do that. You're free to join us too, Carvin. I think I'll stay with Rune. Having to calm down, you two was nerve-wracking enough. Sure thing. I'm not going to drag you there by force. And, hey. When I apologized to you, I really meant it. I got carried away a bit too much. I, I should have been. I should have seen you weren't enjoying it, but I guess that's what alcohol does to you. I'm not like that usually, I promise. 
I stopped noticing things and thinking of others. There's only me, my audience, and whatever stupid idea I'll come up with next. It's a nice social lubricant, but maybe in my case it'd better be used in moderation. Hmm. <laughs> Sounds like it, yeah. It was just a game, and I know you were just having fun. Don't worry. If I felt too uncomfortable, I would have just left. Apology accepted. I hold no grudge. And you, Carvin? Me neither. You went a bit far, but I had fun too. Good to hear. That's a stone off my chest. See you later, then. So, I suppose you want to go to your room and rest? Actually, I th thought about a different way of, fi of winding down. My first idea was a sauna session, but... You're going to tell me about something pretty cool, and I'd like to check it out. A sauna sounded nice, but maybe whatever idea Rune has will be even better. I'd still like to visit a sauna with him later, though. Sure. Any hints at what that might be? Nope. I'm not ruining a surprise. Okay. Lead the way, then. Yes. Okay. Here we go. Uh, monthly. Finally had an update for our cute wolf, Miko. Huge thanks to our great and very patient proofreaders, Squee, Rinka, and Camrite, who all worked on this update. We all want to thank our patrons for support, and thanks to them that this project can continue. If you like the game, please consider becoming our patron. Yes, guys, if you like this game, please please support them. This game is amazing. I love it. I want more content. Give me some more Don Por Don Qu Don Por Don Porus. <laughs> Give me some more Don Chorus. Anyway, guys, I'm going to end it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!